video, I'd like to show you uh, a little bit about the Keynote Magic Move transition, uh, which is what I think one of the coolest features of Keynote. It allows you to create some really interesting, unique animations and really bring your presentation to life. So let's jump in. I'm going to go ahead and create a new presentation here. I'm just going to choose the gradient theme, though it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to get rid of my placeholder text here. Let's go full screen so we can get a little bit of a better view and pull my inspector over here. All right, so we know in Keynote, when we have multiple slides, you're able to add transitions between the slides. And Keynote has a, a great selection of transitions, um, quite a few of them actually. And one of the, uh, the more unique one is the Magic Move transition, which you see right here. Magic Move essentially allows you to put an object, whether it's text or a photo, image, uh, even a video, uh, a shape, etc., on one side, and then have it move to a new location on the second slide. And it actually goes a little further than that. You can actually have it scale to a bigger and smaller size depending on what exactly you're using. Let me just jump right in and show you what I mean. Uh, one of the most basic, interesting ways to use uh, the magic move effect is with text. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and add a block of text right here. I'm going to make it bold and big as if it were a heading of some sort. Okay, and so I have that here on my first slide, and I'm going to put it right in the center. This is what I like to do a lot in my classroom, where I will have a key term or a key idea or a word that we're defining or the topic of a lesson or a lab right in the middle of the slide um, to really jump out at students. And then if I want to add supporting text, I can have it build in on the next slide. But to give it a little interest, I can use Magic Move to move my heading onto a different part of the slide um, to make space for the additional text. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go up here and select my slide and I'm going to duplicate it by either right clicking and choosing duplicate which is what I'm going to do here or you could do command D. And so now I have an exact replica of my first slide. And that's important. With text I can't change the text at all or else the magic move will not work. Now, I have this block of text. I can move it anywhere I want on the slide and magic move will work. What I want to do is I want to keep it in the middle but move it up to the top to make space for some additional text. So I'm going to bring in a new text box and bring in, um, let's get some dummy text here. Uh, okay, so I've got some text and that's way too big. Hopefully nobody is considering using this much text on a slide, but for demonstration purposes, it's just fine. Okay, I don't like that word hanging. Okay, so I'm going to put my text right here, whether it's bullets or whatever it might be. Um, get this kind of laid out the way I want. Now, uh, let's go back to my first slide and let's add that transition. So I'm in my inspector here, and I'm on the second tab, and I'm in transitions, and I want the magic move effect. And of course, you can control the duration. And let's see what this looks like. So here's my first slide. And then when I transition, you get this nice fluid movement of the title, making room for the text beneath it. Uh, you can actually create some really neat features. For example, I can have this text build in from bottom to top okay, with a move in transition. And I can make that happen uh, automatically after I transition. These are all builds um, that I can add to it. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so here's my magic move and then my build. Or even cooler, let's do this. Let's get rid of this text. And I'm going to go back to this first slide. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to zoom out so I can see the space around the slide. And I'm going to add my text box exactly the way I want it, just like I did before make it smaller okay but now I have it now notice I'm on my first slide I have it I'm gonna actually put it off the slide so you can't see it and then I'm gonna copy it and paste it on the second slide exactly where I want it and now that magic move will not only move my title up but it also move this text up bringing it into view let's see what this looks like now it's a really nice looking effect right there and really, really simple to do. Now there's one thing I want to point out. I cannot edit any of the text at all on the second slide. If I change the font, the color, the weight, the size, any of that stuff, the magic move will not work properly. So in terms of text, my text needs to be identical from one to the next. And to go a step further with that, um, 
if I were to make this build in somehow, and that build was still on for the second slide, then the magic move would not work. Obviously, in order for the magic move to work, this text needs to be here right away. It can't have some later transition bringing it in. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, what's neat about the magic move as well is that it doesn't only work with text. We can use shapes. So what I'm going to do is I created a new slide and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to add a shape. Uh, let's add a just a circle here. Okay, make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to put it over here on the side. And again, I'm going to go and I'm going to duplicate this slide. So now I have the same exact slide again. No builds, no nothing yet. And I'm going to move it over here. Okay, and we'll go back to the first one and we will grab our inspector and we will add the magic move transition and let's see what we get. Okay, there you go, very simple. Uh, what's neat about that is I can actually add additional elements. So I can add a square if I want and I could put that square down here on the first slide and then I can copy it, oops, excuse me, copy it and paste it on the second slide somewhere else, maybe up on the top, and the magic move will actually affect both of my objects. They'll move simultaneously, which creates a really neat little effect. Obviously, the possibilities are endless as to what you can actually do with this. Now, one thing to point out, if I were to alter the size, color, or any characteristic of these shapes on the second slide, the magic move will not work. So you cannot say go from a blue circle here to a red circle here. It, it doesn't work that way. If you want to do that, it can be achieved though. You just need to use an actual image like a JPEG or a PNG, something like that, rather than one of these keynote shapes. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to create a new slide. And let me go get a little picture here. I have a keynote icon PNG file, which I am going to copy. And I'm going to bring here into this slide. Let me go zoom in a little bit so you can see this better. Okay. So you can see this is a simple PNG file with a nice transparent background. And what's neat about these is with, uh, unlike the keynote shape, when I do the magic move with this, I can change the image in that I can make it bigger or smaller, or I can rotate it and the magic move will still work. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to make it really, really large on this first first slide. Now normally I wouldn't do that because you're starting to get a little pixelized here, but that's okay for now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to once again duplicate my slide. That's really the key part. You want the same exact thing on the second slide. And now I can mess with this. Um, if this were a shape, all I could do is move it to create the magic move, but because it's an actual image file, I can actually resize it if I want, and the magic move will work. Uh, in fact, what you're looking at right now is how I created the little introduction to all of my videos. It was created in Keynote with the magic move um, effect. So let me make this, uh, I don't know, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I just added some text and my little icon here, make it a little bit smaller, okay. And so I'm going back to the first slide and I'm going to add the magic move and let's see what the result is. Very nice fluid scaling. It looks great. Um, take it one step further. Now I wouldn't want to in this particular case, but if I, if I want to, it's possible to actually rotate my image and that would work with the move as well. I'm not sure if you're aware of this. I could rotate it in two ways. I can go in my inspector here and go to the ruler tab and use the rotation down here. Or I could simply command grab the corner of the object and rotate it. Uh, and to go even a step further, if I command shift grab the corner, it will actually snap it into 45 degrees, 90 degrees, etc. Um, so just to show you what that would look like, I'm going to make it upside down. Of course that's ridiculous, but this is just demonstrating the effect here. So watch what happens. So it actually scales and rotates at the same time, creating a really nice look. Uh, I'll show you one more really neat feature of this. Um, this is actually on Apple's website. They, they demonstrate the magic move using a deck of cards. So what I'm going to do is I have some playing cards here. These are all PNG files. I'm going to copy them and bring them in. So I just got these off the internet. They're way too big, so I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. Okay. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'll just bring them in like this. Now, what you could do, which is neat, is just kind of move them all over the place. And you could even go ahead and start tilting some of them, give them a little bit of an angle. Okay. So I'm basically just making a, a mess of them right now. Okay. Uh, you could do anything, anything you want, which is kind of neat. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of them and just tilt them a bit just to give them a really messy look just like almost like you threw this pile of cards just on the on the table or something like that um, and you'll see it creates a really really cool effect because um, just like the keynote icon I can make these do anything I can make them scale I can make them get into some sort of order um, and it creates a, a really cool look alright so there's my slide and so what I'm going to do is, instead of duplicating here, I could certainly duplicate them and then move them where I want them. But I didn't change them at all, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a new slide. And I'm just going to paste them again, just like I did before. Uh, and this time, I'm going to leave them nice and ordered. I'm just going to make them a little bit smaller, maybe 300 pixels or so. And then I'm going to select them all. And I'm going to just move them right in the middle here. And what will happen here is I go back to the first slide and I'll give it the magic move is everything will just automatically transition into the right order. So as you imagine, you can create a whole bunch of really neat effects. You could have them sort out by suit or by, by card, whatever you'd like. Um, you can have them scale because these are all images. You can have them rotate. Um, and again, you can get some really neat effects. All right, so let me just recap here. I'll go to the beginning. Uh, we can do this with text. Here I have a title and a paragraph, magically move in. You can do it with keynote shapes, and yes, you can do it with multiple shapes. Um, however, keep in mind with shapes and text, you can't change them at all on the second slide or else the magic move won't work. You can do it with PNG files, JPEG files, PDFs. Uh, you can even do it with videos. Um, and with those, you can actually rotate and scale the objects. Uh, and of course, our last example was the uh, the playing cards, which you see right here, right there. That's one of my favorites. All right. So I'm going to put this keynote slide deck on uh, keynoteclassroom.com so you can download it and kind of see exactly how I did everything here. Thanks for listening.